3.1 inductive and deductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is a pattern. An example is two, three halves, four thirds, blank, blank. If I put this as two over one, it's a little clearer to see the pattern. The numerator is increasing by one and the denominator is increasing by one. Also, you can see that it's counting um, one, two, two, three, three, four. However, you see this pattern, but we can continue this. And so the next one is going to be, the numerator is gonna be five and denominator is gonna be four. Numerator is gonna be six and denominator is gonna be five. Now, we didn't ask to write a, an equation for this. It's just a pattern. We could see that there was something happening in the first three terms, and we could continue that pattern in the second two terms. Can you think of an example of in your own, can you think of your own example of using inductive reasoning in your life? So take a moment, pause this video, and give an example of a time where you used a pattern in your own life. Now contrasting, what is deductive reasoning? Deductive reasoning is reasoning involving facts, definitions, and accepted properties in a logical order to reach a conclusion. This is a mathematical definition of deductive reasoning. Um, in real life, you may not need to use accepted properties or definitions, but you may. But this is reasoning involving facts, definitions, and accepted properties mathematically. And then you put them in a logical order to read a, reach a conclusion. So definitions and facts include things like segment addition postulate, or angle addition postulate, or vertical angles property, or linear pair property. These are the types of facts and definitions that we're going to use to help us um, do some deductive reasoning. We'll end up calling it proofs. We're gonna prove some things in math. Here's an example. We're not going to do a full proof for this, we're just going to talk about it. So is the product of an even and odd, an even number and an odd number, even or odd? So let's break this down a little bit. The product means multiply. So if I multiply together an even number and an odd number, will the answer be even or odd? Now what you could do is you could try and um, take a few guesses and see if things are true. So we could just pick any even and odd number, multiply them together. So two times three is six, even, odd, and even. Let's do another even and odd. Let's do four times seven, 28. Let's do a third example. If we do six times three, 18, what does it seem like the pattern is doing? It seems like an even times an odd makes another even number. Now, have you shown this for all time? No, all we've shown right now is an inductive reasoning. This is an inductive reasoning where I'm using a pattern but we would like to move to where we're using deductive reasoning. And what deductive reasoning does for you is that it takes it to the general case. So this is when you're going to show that this could be true in all cases. So most of the time you're going to need to bring along a variable. So how can we write an even number for all cases? So what's the true fact about even numbers? All even numbers divide by two. So the way that you can write it is actually multiplying by two. So if I take any number times two, it's going to be an even number for sure. Now, if I want to make an odd number, well, we can make an even number and add one. So two n plus one. And then what I need to do is multiply this product together or make a product of an even times an odd number. So two n 
times 2n plus 1. Distribute, that's 4n squared plus 2n. And what are we looking for? What we're looking for is, does that result in an even or odd number? So what we need to do is actually refactor this and see if this can be divisible by 2, which in fact it can. If I pull out a 2 in front, 2 times 2n squared plus n is as factored as this can get. So because of this 2, it makes an even number. This right here is deductive reasoning. I'm using the general case to say that this is true for all cases, not just an inductive reasoning pattern where I've only given three cases. This does not encompass the infinite amount of even and odd numbers that exist in the world, but this does. All right, let's try some more examples. What type of reasoning is used? So we've got three boxes, dots are in the corner. So what would be the next dot, uh, next, next picture? So the next picture is gonna be another box. I can see that it's moving clockwise. So I know that my next one's gonna be in the bottom left corner. And how did I do this? This was inductive reasoning. It's a pattern. All right, how about the next one? If a pizza is overcooked, then either the oven is too hot or it was left in for more than 10 minutes. My pizza was overcooked, but it was taken out of the oven at nine minutes. What can we conclude? Well, if we look back up at this conditional statement, an if-then statement, I can see that if the pizza is overcooked, then either the oven is too hot or it was left in for more than 10 minutes, which I know the 10 minutes part is not true, so it must be that the oven was too hot. How did we determine this? What can we conclude? We determined this with deductive reasoning. I used this conditional statement or this, this fact um, to help me decide that the oven was too hot. I eliminated one part of the conditional statement based on facts from this statement. This is deductive reasoning. Okay, switching gears slightly, we're gonna do some algebra review. So take a pause here, um, pause this video. We've done some practice together in class. Pause this video and solve this system of equations using any method you choose. This system is set up for elimination because the X's and the Y's are on the same side but I notice that nothing is ready to be eliminated. So I'm going to uh, make the two and the three become a six. Six and seven may, is a little bit large, so the two and three becoming a six is slightly better. So I'm gonna multiply the top by a negative three and the bottom by a positive two so that I have one positive six and one negative six. So then we've got negative six X minus 18 Y equals negative 12 and 6x minus 14y equals 12. Now I'm ready to add these together. The 6x is cancel and we're left with negative 32y equals zero. Divide by negative 32 and y equals zero. And now I choose any friendly equation to plug zero in for y. So two times x plus six times zero equals four. 6 times 0 cancels, and we're left with 2x equals 4, divide by 2, and x equals 2. So our solution here is an ordered pair is 2 comma 0. Recall that you write it as an ordered pair because these are two lines that intersect each other at one location. These two lines intersect at 2 comma 0. Now also switching gears, we're going to review solving quadratic equations if you can use square roots. This is not true for all cases. So pay attention, you can only use square roots in certain times. Now this equation here is one that we can solve with square roots. 
The way that I know that I can solve this with square roots is because there is only one x value. There's only one x in this equation. If there are two x's, then you must factor. So one x, you can use square roots. Two x's, you must factor. This is key. <laughs> if you've got one x value, you can use square roots. If you've got two x's, then you must factor. If you've got one x squared, I should say. If you have one x squared, then you can use square roots. If you have two x squared, you can factor. So for example, a two x squared one would look like this. 2x squared plus 4x plus 7. You need to factor that. You can't use square roots. So this is how you use square roots. You solve it just like a linear equation. So we're trying to get the x by itself, the single x. So we're going to subtract 9 from both sides. Then we get 3x squared equals 75. Then you can divide by 3. And we get x squared equals 25. And now what's the opposite of a square? A square root. So we take the square root of both sides and we get x equals the square root of 25. Now tell me, uh, going back up to this step, what is something squared that makes 25? Well, definitely five times five is 25, but is there a second answer to this? What's something squared that makes positive 25? Also, negative five. So these problems still have two solutions, x equals five and negative five. The other reason that we know there's still gonna be two solutions is because this is a quadratic. Quadratics cross the x-axis two times in their parabola shape. So in this case, it would cross on positive five and negative five on both sides. Pause this video and try the next three problems on your own. So in the second one, I'm gonna multiply through by negative two to get rid of my denominator. So then I've got five X squared and then negative 160 times negative two is 320. Divide by five, X squared equals 64. Square root of both sides What's something squared that makes 64? Both eight and negative eight. All right, minus 17. Negative eight squared equals negative two. Divide by negative eight. So then we get x squared equals one fourth. And then when you take the square root of both sides here, you can split this into the square root of one over the square root of four. So then that makes it one over two, but recall that you still have both solutions. So it's one half and negative one half. Two solutions, still need two solutions. Last one, minus two. Y squared equals 72. Square root, square root. So then we get y equals the square root of 72, which is not a nice number. If you type that into your calculator, you're going to get a decimal. In this class, do not use the decimal unless it's in a context. This problem is what I like to call a naked number problem. It is not in a context and it does not ask for the decimal. So what you need to do is leave it as an exact simplified radical. Do not use the decimal. Simplify the radical. So the way that you simplify the radical, one way you can think about it is, what is the largest perfect square that divides 72? That's one way to think about it. So what's, what's the largest perfect square that divides 72? Another way to do it is to make a factor tree and you just split it into numbers that it multiplies into. So nine and eight, three and three, four and two, and then the four breaks down to a two and two. So this is its prime factorization. So then the square root of 72 can be rewritten as three times three times two times two times two. Three times three is nine, nine times two is 18, 18 times two, and then times two is 72. 
3 times 3 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2. And then we're left over with a 2 inside of the hat. So then 3 times 2 is 6 square roots of 2. And recall that there are both solutions, so it's going to be 6 root 2 and negative 6 root 2. Please use the simplified radical and not the decimal answers. Thank you.